Today we are going to talk about uh, the kernel uh, TLS handshakes. Uh, this section is the third part uh, of uh, discussion. Uh, previously, there were uh, two our talks on previous NetDF conferences. And today we will have a look on uh, why uh, kernel TLS handshakes matter. Uh, we will look onto some benchmarks and we'll uh, uh, discuss design proposal for the Linux mainstream. Uh, in our case, we develop um, uh, Tempestev W, which is uh, application delivery controller. Uh, application delivery controllers are typically HTTP proxies, which also provide you a lot of uh, security features like uh, DDoS protection, TLS uh, or SSL offloading, uh, web security and so on. And uh, typical players in the market are F5, Big IP or Fortinet ADC. And uh, Tempest FW is uh, considered to be an open source alternative to such uh, proprietary appliances. So we do care about high performance uh, TLS handshakes. And uh, TLS handshakes is a typical, uh, very important uh, measurement in um, technical specifications of the appliances. For example, how many connections per, per second you can establish, uh, I mean, TLS uh, connections per second, or how many HTTPS transactions per second you can make. Uh, this is also very good uh, video uh, from a F5 uh, guy who uh, compared performance of uh, Big IP and Nginx on top of DBTK using a stack uh, TCP uh, IP stack on top of DBTK inside the virtual machine using only uh, CPU. And uh, in that uh, measurements, uh, Big IP wins about 30 to 50% uh, transactions per second. And uh, this is because Big IP uses uh, their own uh, TLS implementation. So TLS is very, very crucial for us. However, if we talk about uh, generic uh, Linux users, there are uh, cases uh, where you can benefit from uh, faster TLS handshakes or uh, kernel TLS handshakes in particular. Uh, for example, there are uh, DDoS uh, attacks on TLS handshakes and everybody uh, probably can win from the faster handshakes to mitigate such kinds of attacks. And uh, this uh, particular concern about uh, security. security. Uh, so, uh, Actually, it does make sense to uh, separate your uh, private uh, private key and all security sensitive data uh, outside of your main working threads. Uh, so, uh, in Vanish case, uh, guys uh, use separate uh, hitch TLS proxy uh, outside of the main Vanish uh, worker process. Uh, so if you separate uh, key management and all security sensitive uh, data like uh, TLS uh, session keys and so on outside of the uh, main working logic and uh, actually this logic is considered to be evolved very, very quickly and you could uh, put a lot of bugs into production uh, thanks to the uh, quick development. Uh, in particular, in uh, CloudBleed uh, case for CloudFair, the guy starts the uh, blog post from the world that uh, no one um, client uh, private key were com compromised uh, thanks to separation of uh, the main uh, working logic from the uh, TLS uh, termination logic. So uh, security can be generally uh, improve it uh, by separation of uh, private key management inside of uh, kernel space and keeping uh, the main working logic in user space uh, in worker process. Um, besides this uh, topic, there are also uh, good, good to have faster handshakes. You see that uh, even uh, fast session resumption can be uh, even more faster with uh, kernel TLS. Uh, speaking about uh, performance, let's have a look on um, profile. This uh, profile for OpenSSL and Nginx with uh, NIST uh, elliptic curve uh, 256. 
And in the profile, uh, we just establish, uh, in this case, a lot of uh, TLS uh, connections. And in the profile, we see that uh, most of the calls are about uh, memory management, uh, copies, the line, and so on. Uh, generally speaking, uh, routines uh, not in, uh, not about cryptography mathematics. Uh, also, uh, interesting routines, uh, interesting in our uh, presentation, um, in red in the slide, and also there are uh, blue, two routines in blue, uh, second and third. It's about uh, Montgomery multiplication and Montgomery squaring. We will uh, talk more about the uh, routines later in the presentation. But this, uh, um, in this slide, we uh, can, can see that we can dramatically improve performance of uh, TLS handshakes uh, just by eliminating uh, the overhead uh, of memory management and uh, copies and zeroing. Uh, by the way, uh, since um, the NIST uh, curve is still, uh, it's uh, quite old curve, curve is still important because uh, you need, need uh, to use the curve for ECDSA uh, certificate. So while the curve uh, is still important and it's old, uh, we still uh, have have to have the curve uh, to manage our uh, certificates, and uh, the uh, ma the mathematical algorithms are involved in the curve implementations. Uh, some of them are just outdated. We'll uh, talk more about this uh, later. During the presentation, we'll uh, use uh, two benchmark tools. The first one, uh, TLS PEF, is developed by our team. Uh, basically, it just establishes as many uh, TLS connections as possible and drops the connection. Uh, VLK is a uh, very widely used um, HP uh, benchmarking tool, and it also can use um, uh, OpenSSL or another SSL uh, libraries for TLS, and we use the benchmark uh, to, uh, to measure HPS uh, transaction performance. In uh, our performance uh, measurements, we use a uh, virtual machine. Unfortunately, we had no uh, machine with uh, virtual API C and a uh, physical pair of physical uh, machine with very fast uh, as a net connection. Uh, so uh, to start, uh, to, to start from, from the source code, uh, actually we started uh, TMPS TLS from MBIT uh, TLS uh, and uh, we moved MBIT TLS uh, to uh, the kernel and uh, we used uh, MBIT TLS uh, because of two main factors. The first one is it's uh, very portable. We uh, needed only one uh, human month to move it uh, into kernel. The second thing is that MBIT TLS provides very serious security. Uh, however, MBIT TLS is too slow. It uh, doesn't care about performance at all. And uh, there are a lot of uh, things which can be improved in MBIT TLS. Uh, to improve uh, performance on bit TLS, we uh, develop uh, some of mathematical algorithms on our own. And also we use uh, Wolf SSL for uh, some routines which we uh, can't uh, make better. Uh, we didn't use uh, Wolf SSL uh, because uh, it's very, very large and uh, it's uh, not so easy to port it into the Linux kernel. Uh, it's very fast and we will see benchmarks for Wolf SSL today, uh, but there might be some uh, security issues uh, in the library. And we uh, I also cover the issues with data. Uh, so um, speaking about MBIT TLS, uh, we, let's start from the benchmark of the original MBIT TLS uh, being ported into the Linux kernel and um, our current implementation. Uh, we see that uh, the original implementation is about 30 times slower than current uh, TMPS TLS code. Uh, this is just a proof uh, how MVTOS is slow. Uh, 
Uh, the next thing is uh, let's see how how we uh, ca compare with uh, current open set and nginx performance this uh, benchmark on uh, uh, virtual machine we see that uh, current MPS tls is about 40 uh, percent uh, better performance in connections uh, tls connections per second and uh, provides about four uh, times lower latency also in average also, if we see the best cases for performance peak and uh, latency, we also provide bet better numbers. Uh, the next thing is about uh, 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 the previous slide was about uh, full TLS uh, uh, handshake, but this one is about uh, TLS uh, session resumption. In uh, this case, we provide about 80% better performance and the same latency as Nginx and open SSL. Uh, however, in uh, our tests, we observed uh, spikes, uh, huge spikes of latency. And uh, this uh, uh, GitHub issue, which we need to work on uh, more in our implementation. Uh, we also compared uh, different Linux uh, kernel versions, uh, 4.14 and uh, 5.7 in uh, TLS session resumption. And we see that uh, the old kernels provide a bit uh, higher uh, performance. This is mostly because of uh, recent uh, uh, attacks mitigation in uh, uh, Intel CPUs. Uh, also speaking about um, the recent CPU vulnerabilities, we assumed that KPTI will uh, impact the performance a lot. However, it actually isn't the case and we didn't observe more than 4% of performance degradation uh, with uh, KPTI enabled. And this is uh, pretty different from what MariaDB observed. MariaDB uh, server observed up to 40% uh, percent performance degradation with KPTI. Uh, actually, the reason for this is that uh, TLS handshakes uh, don't involve so many uh, system calls, uh, either for network I.O. or memory allocation or uh, random uh, generation. Uh, this slide is uh, maybe kind of uh, obvious, but it's always good to see some numbers. This uh, how uh, TLS uh, handshake uh, impacts the uh, HP as uh, transaction performance. Uh, this this uh, in this slide uh, previously we uh, discussed uh, how the uh, network performance differs in uh, open cell case nginx or for tempest tls but in this uh, slide we see uh, how the uh, cryptography mathematic uh, is fast uh, this uh, comparison of benchmark uh, results for open cell wolf ssl and tempest tls we see that wolf ssl uh, seems the fastest one uh, however this uh, this uh, question why the CDHE uh, so fast than the CDSA. Uh, typically, CDHE uh, uses uh, unknown uh, point multiplication. I will describe about this uh, math uh, a bit later. Uh, it means that a CDSA uh, can be optimized uh, for uh, fixed point multiplication, why CDHE uh, cannot be optimized in this way. And we actually see for open cell case that CGHE is much slower than CDSA. Uh, however, it, this is not the case for Wolf SL. If we look at uh, TMPS numbers, we see that the CDHE also slower than CDSA. Uh, however, if we compare uh, TMPS benchmark results with Wolf SL and open SL, uh, actually the uh, results aren't um, completely fair. The reason is that uh, Wolf SL and Open SL uh, measure only uh, only CDS uh, say signing and CDHE uh, secret key uh, generation. But in the case of uh, Tempesta benchmark, we uh, 
uh, benchmark as a home mathematic operations, in uh, including ephemeral case generation. Uh, it's maybe uh, not so uh, dramatic for a CDSA, but this is absolutely dramatic for a CDHA. In a CDHA, we, uh, in our case, we uh, execute uh, as much as uh, two more uh, logic uh, as uh, in comparison with WolfSL or OpenSL. This is because uh, in our case, we have to perform um, two uh, point multiplication instead of only one. Uh, in the uh, mean, meantime, while we uh, probably we're not so but in uh, raw uh, performance, uh, uh, mathematic performance comparison against OpenSL and WolfSL, we know that our mathematic uh, still isn't uh, perfect and we need to work more. Uh, however, even if we is not so uh, super optimized uh, mathematic, we see that Tempesta TLS can deliver much more performance than uh, OpenSL. Uh, this uh, exactly because uh, of reducing uh, memory copies, uh, context switches, no system calls for network I.O., less message queues on socket I.O., and so on. All the things which we discussed on the one of the first uh, slides with the Nginx and open cell profiles. Uh, speaking about elliptic uh, of uh, mathematics, uh, I want to uh, reference more is uh, NIST elliptic of uh, 256. And this is uh, a very nice um, uh, paper from uh, Guiron and Kasnov by uh, 2014. It's uh, pretty old. However, this, uh, the paper describes the real implementation of uh, current open cell implementation. Uh, in the most uh, simple case, uh, the most expensive operation in elliptic curve, uh, curves is uh, to multiply uh, point P on uh, scalar M. Scalar M is always uh, security sensitive, uh, some secret. Uh, P uh, is a secret for ECDHE and a fixed point for ECDSA. Uh, in uh, the most uh, straightforward uh, Algorithm, we just iterate each bit of the scalar, which is uh, 256 uh, bits. Uh, and uh, for each bit, we perform one point doubling, and uh, one uh, half of the cases we uh, perform point addition, the uh, se second layer of um, uh, mathematics. Uh, actually, uh, there are several. Uh, layers in uh, mathematic construction. The first layer is our point multiplication. The second one is uh, point doubling and additional. Uh, after that, there uh, we you, you can make a choice in which coordinate system you uh, you prefer to work. Uh, perform uh, point doubling and addition. It could be. Jacobian coordinates, Affin coordinates, the Chudovsky coordinates, and so on. Um, and uh, after that, uh, you have uh, uh, scalar um, operations, uh, operations on big integers, and you also uh, have modular reduction. On the top layer of um, algorithms, uh, we just saw the most straightforward implementation. However, there are recent uh, research uh, exactly in point uh, multiplication. However, OpenSL and WolfSL don't use uh, their approach. Uh, point doubling and addition uh, seems the same for all the crypto libraries. Uh, also seems all the libraries use uh, Jacobian coordinates. And if you use uh, Jacobian coordinates, you need uh, model inversion. Model inversion is the second most expensive uh, mathematic operation after uh, point uh, multiplication. Actually, point multiplication includes uh, model inversion. Uh, and there's also very recent research from Bernstein about fast model uh, inversion. And we use uh, these uh, algorithms uh, with some variations. After that, we uh, may decide which uh, model reduction we can use. There are uh, Montgomery reduction used by WolfSL and OpenSL, 
and uh, FIPS uh, reduction used originally by MVTLS. Uh, at the moment, uh, we use FIPS uh, model reduction. We applied uh, all the research which we found to, to uh, speed up the model reduction, uh, in particular the uh, work from BOSS, but it seems this uh, dead end and uh, probably we will move to Montgomery reduction at, at some point. Uh, all in all, uh, there are uh, mathematical layers. And for example, if you use uh, faster model inversion, then uh, you uh, run less um, scalar multiplication or sc scalar uh, squaring in this, this algorithms. This means uh, in terms that uh, you can uh, use different model reduction, maybe a model reduction with smaller overheads than Montgomery, but uh, costly at the end, like a fee, FIPS. Uh, so if you change one of the layer or of the elliptic curve uh, algorithms, you typically need to adjust all the layers above and below uh, this particular layer to make very ba balanced and well-optimized implementation. Uh, for example, uh, as an example of such optimization, we can consider uh, protection against uh, side channel attacks. There are a number of uh, different uh, side channel attacks like timing attacks, power analyzers, and so on. And usually uh, cryptography uh, libraries use different approaches to protect against uh, side channel attacks. The first one is to use uh, and construct uh, constant time algorithms uh, by design. The second one is to uh, have a non-constant time uh, algorithm uh, into add uh, additional dummy operations which can make the algorithm uh, constant time essentially. And the last approach is to use a uh, point randomization. So if we uh, randomize our calculations, then the attacker can, cannot uh, make an assumption what was the secret because we randomized it. Uh, and uh, in this point, uh, for example, if we uh, use the technique for uh, model in, uh, inversion uh, uh, of the Bernstein, uh, Bernstein algorithm, we can uh, run up to three times uh, less number of iterations in comparison with uh, original constant time algorithm. Uh, actually, uh, modern CPUs uh, provide a DRAND uh, instruction which, which allows you uh, to get uh, random values very, very quickly. So if we uh, move from uh, constant time algorithms to point randomization, uh, uh, point randomization and non-constant time algorithms uh, using uh, the RDRAND instruction, it means that typically you can uh, go much, much faster. Uh, however, unfortunately, there are uh, recent attacks against the uh, instruction and mitigation against the attacks cost us about uh, 97 uh, percent of performance. Uh, the uh, next topic about uh, mem uh, SCA is uh, memory usage. Actually, different law libraries uh, use different approaches uh, to compute uh, for example, CDSA, uh, CDSA. Uh, actually, uh, as I mentioned before, CDSA allows you to pre-compute uh, some data for fixed point multiplication. And BTLS uh, uses very small uh, table, relatively small uh, of eight uh, kilobytes and dynamically uh, computed. OpenSL and WolfSL uh, use very similar tables of 150 kilobytes. And uh, um, OpenCell and MVTLS uh, uses full table scan on each iteration of point multiplication. Uh, the point multiplication algorithm uh, uses about 36 uh, iterations. It means that OpenCell and MVTLS uh, scans the whole tables about 36 uh, times. Uh, also, MVTLS uh, uses uh, point randomization uh, for more security. But WolfSL uh, just uses direct access uh, to the pre-computed values. The worst thing is that um, 
the table is accessed uh, depending on the security values of the uh, secret. It means that uh, measuring the time of uh, access times uh, to the table, you can uh, you, you can reveal some secret bits uh, from the uh, uh, secret scalar. And uh, having that, uh, we use a very large table, uh, which is much larger than uh, first level of uh, data cache. It's uh, probably not so uh, hard to measure difference access times. Uh, we uh, created a security issue, a uh, security report for volume for sale for this non-constant time access. Uh, one of the uh, most uh, performance uh, crucial part of MBTLS why it's so slow is uh, managing uh, big integer, also known as multi-precision integers. Uh, also, we have MPIs in the Linux kernel, and uh, most of the crypto libraries actually use uh, MPIs. However, OpenCell, WolfPSL, and uh, current WireGuard uh, don't use uh, MPIs in hot path. But uh, MBTLS uses uh, MPIs everywhere. MPIs, uh, for example, in uh, our case of NIST curve, is a uh, 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 large integer of 32 bits, which is uh, four longs. And uh, working with uh, MPIs, you need to manage uh, the data structure, uh, like allocated uh, uh, size of bytes, how, uh, how many actual bytes are used, the sign, and so on. Uh, so uh, in MBTLS, uh, well, uh, elliptic curve, uh, computation involves uh, hundreds of MPIs in each round. It means that you need to uh, allocate and insulate hundreds of these small data structures. So we uh, significantly optimized MBTLS approach by introducing uh, memory pools, which are actually just uh, uh, like uh, static uh, snapshots of all the elliptic curve computation. It means that at uh, startup, we allocate uh, contiguous uh, memory pages with all allocated and utilized uh, MPIs. And we, when we go to handshake, we just uh, copy the whole uh, pages uh, in a stream uh, fashion instead of utilizing and copying uh, MPIs uh, separately. Uh, we still use uh, memory pools, but not so heavily because we mostly move from MPIs to raw uh, integer computations, just like another um, libraries. So we are approaching the end of the presentation with a proposal uh, for the yeah. kernel inclusion of the kernel TLS implementation. Uh, this is an uh, example of proposed API for socket API. More details will, will be described in our paper and this uh, link to our GitHub issue when we appreciate you to comment uh, the uh, API design and uh, propose some uh, additions or requests for the API. Uh, typically, we propose to a uh, lot uh, public key uh, with a certificate and private key using existing add key API. So we create a separate key link uh, for each pair of certificate and uh, private key. Next, we uh, create a normal uh, socket and uh, make a set socopt just like on the KTLS. And in the set uh, socopt, we point out the key required key ring, uh, cipher suite, and uh, TLS version. Next, uh, accept uh, system call will return uh, you not only TCP connected socket, but also the socket with uh, established uh, TLS connection. This uh, question how to uh, fall back uh, from uh, if we not able to uh, establish a uh, handshake to user space uh, about SNI and so on. The, all the details will be described in um, paper and uh, in GitHub issue. Uh, we uh, propose uh, the server-side only implementation because servers are 
uh, it seems uh, sabots will benefit uh, mostly from the uh, internal inclusion. Uh, next, we propose to uh, perform full TLS handshakes in software queue, just like uh, TCP handshakes. Uh, this will improve uh, overall throughput and uh, reduce the latency. And also, while uh, software queue uh, uh, processes a bunch of network packets, we can make only one FPU context uh, uh, storing and uh, restoring in context of uh, for the whole uh, bunch of uh, TLS uh, handshakes. We made the micro benchmark uh, showing how important uh, to make exactly one uh, FPU uh, save and restore for a batch of uh, network packets uh, in uh, software queue processing. Uh, so uh, it's just have no uh, point to, uh, to save and restore FPU context for each uh, packets or each uh, TLS handshake message. Um, actually, most of the code um, for uh, TLS handshakes can be found in uh, current uh, kernel, uh, Linux kernel. Uh, for example, this asymmetric uh, case management, this uh, add key API, the curve uh, 25519 RSA and uh, maybe uh, almost all the uh, symmetric uh, crypto algorithms are already in uh, the Linux kernel. So it uh, allows us uh, to introduce only about 13,000 lines of code of actual uh, TLS state machine, uh, TLS tickets, the NIST elliptic curve and the uh, logic for cipher suits. Uh, so before uh, going to upstream, we are planning to finish this uh, tasks. Uh, the first one is to finish our um, uh, work with uh, performance optimization of an IST uh, curve. The second one is uh, we want to go to upstream with TLS 1.3. And uh, also this uh, task to merge our current uh, TLS implementation with the uh, kernel asymmetric keys API because at the moment it, this wasn't done yet. Uh, that's all we love to hear from you uh, if you can benefit from uh, the kernel TLS uh, handshakes. In particular, uh, if you can benefit even on uh, 1.2, uh, uh, TLS handshakes and don't need uh, 1.3. Uh, also, we'd love to see your feedback about our API, uh, some implementation requests and so on. And also we will happy to receive your questions on uh, our email or GitHub. So that's all, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so looks like I don't see any questions. Um, if anyone has any, I'll give uh, a few seconds, but um, we'll go ahead and proceed to the next talk otherwise. Uh, Tom, I just have a uh, comment from, uh, for, from our side that uh, unfortunately I had not enough uh, time to uh, say, uh, speak more about uh, the circuit API proposal for kernel TLS uh, handshakes. So I appreciate if you can visit our GitHub issue 1433 uh, to comment and read more about the uh, particular uh, technical proposal for the API. The comments are very important for us to make the right uh, design of the API and uh, uh, may make something uh, useful for other people. So uh, what forum do you think the discussion would take place on the APIs? Is, is this on NetDev or somewhere else? Uh, we, we had uh, internally, we had a lot of discussions about uh, which features of uh, TLS constraints we uh, have to support. For example, uh, how to manage SNIs, uh, how, uh, how SNIs uh, should be matched. Uh, we propose CBPF uh, custom matching for SNIs. Uh, there are many issues with uh, TLS uh, API, like uh, sometimes for the same SNI, you need to 
lot of uh, different um, certificates and private key in the case if the CI uh, 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 certificate was re revoked. So uh, sp if we speak on engineering level, uh, probably it's not so complex, but overall API and uh, the features to support uh, certificates management are uh, quite uh, complex. Okay, so uh, so we'll look for that, um, but let's go ahead and move on to the next talk. Thank you. Okay, thank you. My name is Pavel Szymański and uh, uh, today I would like to present the results of my performance characterization experiments that uh, I did with my colleague Manasi Deval. Uh, so let's look on the uh, agenda of the presentation. Uh, first, we'll start with some background about TLS. Next, I will talk about test uh, setup and uh, uh, also give you results of the performance characterization. And we'll have some short summary at the end. So starting with uh, uh, some basic knowledge about uh, TLS. So this is uh, uh, most commonly used uh, uh, network protocol that provides privacy and data integrity. Uh, it runs on uh, on top of uh, layer three uh, protocols like TCP or uh, UDP and uh, consists of uh, two sub protocols. The first one is uh, the handshake protocol with, uh, which deals with uh, negotiating uh, the, the security parameters uh, of the TLS connection like crypto algorithms, uh, encryption keys, and things like that. The other uh, sub protocol is a record protocol. And uh, it is responsible for fragmenting the application data into records, protecting them with uh, crypto algorithm and then transmitting uh, the encrypted data over uh, transport protocol. And uh, uh, TLS supports uh, multiple uh, cryptographic algorithm, but uh, uh, in this presentation and in, in general in my uh, in my experiments, uh, uh, I focused on the AES GCM uh, encryption uh, because mm, this is uh, the algorithm that uh, could be. Uh, improved by using uh, special AESNI instructions available on uh, Intel uh, x86 uh, CPUs. Uh, so uh, here you can uh, see uh, two uh, options or two, two possibilities to, to implement uh, TLS. The first one I call user space TLS and uh, uh, in this uh, option all the TLS functionality is implemented in a TLS uh, library in user space hence the name uh, user space TLS and uh, the second uh, option is uh, KTLS or kernel TLS where the handshake protocol is still implemented in TLS library, but the record protocol is implemented in, inside uh, a kernel. And also the TLS uh, record protocol implementation uh, uses a crypto algorithm uh, module to, to perform actual data encryption and uh, decryption. Uh, when, you, when we uh, look into a typical HTTP uh, server uh, implementation, uh, uh, the data flow when handling uh, HTTP uh, GET uh, request uh, looks like in this uh, uh, slide. So basically, uh, after receiving the uh, the 
the uh, HTTP GET request. The server uh, sends a file read uh, syscall uh, to request kernel to read the, the file um, from storage device. Um, so the file content is first copied to the kernel to the page cache inside kernel and next it, it is copied into buffers in the user space. Then the TLS library performs the cryptographic operation and the encrypted uh, data is sent from a user space buffer to kernel using a socket write uh, syscall and finally it, it gets uh, sent to uh, network uh, interface. Uh, so this is this is what happens in case of user space TLS. And uh, uh, in, in, in case of kernel TLS, uh, uh, the only difference uh, is that uh, uh, the data uh, is not encrypted in user space. It is still transferred to uh, to buffers in user space, but it's not uh, uh, encrypted in user space, but it is uh, uh, sent to uh, kernel, still using uh, socket write, syscall, and then it is uh, again uh, encrypted uh, and uh, sent to the network interface. However, with uh, kernel TLS, there is uh, another option possible, uh, which I call uh, kernel TLS send file flow. So in this case, uh, the HTTP server uses a send file uh, system call, and that this system call requests the kernel to read uh, data from the storage device and sends uh, a content of a file in uh, TLS or in general you know, uh, TCP uh, connection. And uh, as you can see, the data is not uh, uh, transferred to user space. So it is uh, read from storage device to uh, uh, page cache inside uh, kernel. Next, the TLS uh, module inside kernel encrypts uh, the data and uh, the, en the encrypted uh, data is uh, sent over network interface. So in fact, we have uh, three options uh, possible to, to implement uh, TLS. The first one, uh, is user space. Uh, the second one is uh, KTLS with uh, write syscall. And uh, the third one is uh, uh, KTLS with send file syscall. And uh, uh, in our uh, characterization, performance characterization experiments, uh, we were focused on uh, comparing uh, these uh, three scenarios these three implementation options with uh, uh, two uh, uh, scenarios. The first scenario was uh, something we named uh, simple web server. So in this case, uh, the HTTP server uh, sends uh, files uh, uh, of size between one kilobyte and 10 megabytes. And uh, the, the number of uh, TLS connection is quite moderate. It's uh, one, we, we picked 100 connections. Uh, each connection sends HTTP GET requests uh, back to back. The second uh, scenario that we measured uh, was a, um, a simulation of media streaming, uh, similar to MPEG dash protocol, although we didn't use uh, actual MPEG dash protocol. So the difference here is that uh, the file size was uh, fixed to one megabyte. Uh, 
there was significantly uh, more uh, TLS connections. We used 10,000 connections and uh, uh, for each uh, connection, the HTTP requests, uh, requests were, were sent with some uh, time gap or time uh, window. Yeah? There was uh, one to five second uh, space uh, uh, between uh, each uh, HTTP GET request sent over a single connection. Uh, in terms of uh, hardware setup, uh, uh, we used two machines, uh, one with uh, a HTTP server, uh, or one uh, playing the role of HTTP server, the other playing the role of a HTTP uh, client. And uh, both of them were equipped, equipped with uh, Intel, Xeon, uh, Gold, uh, uh, CPU, Skylake uh, generation with 32 uh, cores and with uh, 384 gigabyte of uh, DDR memory. And the machines were connected with 100 gigabit Ethernet uh, connection uh, using uh, uh, Intel 100, uh, uh, 800 uh, series uh, network controllers. Uh, the BIOS configuration was uh, modified to basically disabled to, to disable all the features that uh, may uh, in, or, uh, cause problem with the uh, uh, repeatability of results so things like hyper threading c states p states and turbo are disabled uh, and uh, in terms of uh, software configuration, we were using um, Ubuntu with uh, uh, Linux kernel 5.1.0, uh, 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 and with uh, obviously KTLS enabled, and also AESNI uh, crypto driver. So this is the driver that is. Uh, 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 that supports uh, AES GCM um, uh, algorithm uh, using uh, AES and I uh, instructions. Uh, similarly, the OpenSSL library, so the, the user space library, uh, was also compiled with the AES and I uh, support enabled. On the server side, we uh, had uh, Nginx uh, as an HTTP server application with a special KTLS uh, send file patch. Yeah. So it, it, was, it was a patch that allows us to, send, to uh, use uh, KTLS with a send file. Uh, at least at that time, the official version was not uh, supporting such a combination. And on the client side, we uh, we were using WRK uh, traffic generator, or HTTP uh, traffic generator. Uh, uh, we set the TLS configuration uh, to TLS 1.2 with the max record size 16 kilobytes, and uh, 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 the crypto algorithm uh, was AES 128. Uh, uh, with uh, GCM uh, the, and uh, we also enabled uh, persistent connections in uh, HTTP to avoid um, the overhead uh, uh, required to perform connection establishment and both, both TCP and TLS uh, connection establishment and handshake. So basically, we were measuring only the, the performance of the record protocol, not the uh, handshake protocol. Um, and uh, in this uh, 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 chart, you can see a comparison of uh, uh, throughput uh, uh, for the simple web server 
scenario. So the dark blue uh, bar is always 100% and it's the, the performance of user space and uh, uh, the, all the other are the KTLS write and KTLS send file. So uh, you can see that uh, uh, for smaller file sizes, like one kilobyte or four kilobytes, uh, the KTLS and especially KTLS send file performance it is much lower. Yes, it's up to 40% lower comparing to uh, user space TLS. But uh, with uh, 64 kilobytes uh, and uh, uh, above uh, um, the uh, KTLS send file uh, performance uh, uh, is higher than user space. So this higher performance was something that uh, uh, we expected, uh, but uh, the lower performance for uh, uh, smaller smaller file sizes and especially lower by 40% was a surprise, definitely a surprise uh, for us. Um, so we did some uh, investigation uh, and uh, uh, came to um, two conclusions or two, two reasons why the uh, KTLS is uh, lower performance than um, user space for smaller files. So the first reason is uh, how the HTTP response is sent by the HTTP server. Um, so when the HTTP uh, response uh, must be sent, it consists of two parts, the response header and the response payload. And for, in case of a uh, send file uh, uh, flow, uh, the HTTP server must first prepare the response uh, header in the user space buffer and use write syscall uh, to transfer um, this buffer content to, to the network stack. And next, uh, it is using a send file syscall to send HTTP response payload uh, from file uh, located in the file system. Uh, so in, um, as you can see, you know, it's uh, two, uh, first of all, there are two syscalls, not one and uh, uh, the other reason is that uh, okay, this uh, uh, there is still some overhead of transferring data from user space. If the files are uh, are um, small, then uh, the relative amount of data that which is sent uh, from user space buffer is uh, uh, higher. Uh, and uh, the second uh, reason uh, for this uh, lower efficiency, uh, KTLS send file lower efficiency for smaller files is uh, um, the way how ASNI uh, driver and uh, TLS uh, modules uh, interact with uh, each other. So basically, when ESNI, so the ESNI driver uh, implements uh, an algorithm uh, called uh, Karatsuba algorithm and it uh, precomputes some uh, uh, values, some you know, heavy computation values, uh, uh, which are which then can be reused for the entire uh, TLS uh, connection lifetime. Uh, however, uh, when TLS module uh, uh, calls script to driver, uh, it's, there, there is no mechanism to uh, uh, 
let's say, save this uh, and uh, provide uh, uh, again this uh, uh, pre-computed uh, values uh, to the crypto driver. So basically, with uh, each uh, uh, encryption request sent from TLS to the crypto driver, the driver uh, pre-computes these uh, values uh, again and again. So they are only reused for uh, single single uh, TLS uh, record. Uh, while in uh, user space implementation, uh, these pre-computed values are reused for entire uh, TLS connection lifetime. So that's uh, that's the the problem. And again, uh, um, it's uh, more visible if the uh, TLS records are uh, lower size, which happens for uh, small file sizes sent over HTTP. Uh, connection. Uh, the second uh, scenario that uh, uh, we looked into uh, is media streaming scenario. And in this case, uh, instead of uh, measuring uh, throughput with uh, maximum CPU utilization, we did something uh, different. Basically, we uh, kept the throughput on uh, on a uh, uh, on the same uh, level uh, with uh, uh, 70 gigabit uh, per second or 30 gigabit per second so so we we had two options the first one was uh, with uh, files sent from tmpfs from memory and th the other option was uh, with uh, files uh, uh, transferred from NVMe uh, device, and uh, uh, we measured, in this case, we, we measured the CPU utilization and uh, memory bandwidth uh, utilization. And uh, here you can see that the results of uh, CPU utilization, so there is no big surprise. Uh, the user space, uh, efficiency in terms of uh, CPU utilization was uh, lower between 16 and 20 uh, percent uh, uh, lower and uh, this was something we expected based on the results with uh, uh, simple web server uh, scenario yeah? because uh, for uh, bigger file sizes and in this case that the file sizes were around one megabyte. Uh, basically the user space uh, TLS performance was uh, lower comparing to KTLS uh, both write and uh, send file. Uh, however, uh, the memory bandwidth uh, measurements, uh, uh, which uh, you can see now, were um, uh, a surprise again for us. Uh, the, basically, we expected since the, you know the, the both the KTLS uh, send file eliminates some memory copy operations, it eliminates transfer of data into user space. We we expected memory bandwidth utilization to be lower for KTLS send file. Um, but uh, uh, it was the other way around is the KTLS uh, send file and also KTLS write uh, generated uh, higher memory bandwidth. Um, we suspect that uh, uh, you know, this is uh, mainly related to the fact that uh, in case of KTLS, the implementation is, uh, um, let's see, uh, scattered among uh, three different uh, pieces of code. Yes, there is a, a TLS 
library uh, in user space with which uh, uh, still still transfers uh, the data and uh, from uh, application then there is a uh, the ktls module and uh, uh, crypto module in in the kernel and since this implementation is uh, uh, put in three different uh, places uh, the, the cache efficiency uh, is lower yeah, so it, it basically uh, uh, generates uh, more uh, cache pollution and generates more uh, traffic to uh, memory. Um, uh, so to summarize, summarize my uh, presentation uh, in uh, uh, our experiments, we focused on uh, three uh, implementation options for TLS, the user space TLS, uh, KTLS uh, write and uh, KTLS send file. And in the simple web server scenario, the KTLS send file provides uh, highest performance for files uh, of 64 kilobyte size and above and for lower uh, sizes uh, the, the user space TLS uh, provides better performance uh, and in the multimedia streaming scenario uh, the KTLS send file and KTLS write uh, provide lower CPU utilization but uh, uh, higher memory bandwidth uh, utilization uh, that's all what I wanted to present. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. That was uh, somewhat enlightening performance results. Uh, I don't see any questions at this point. Um, do you have any further comments on that? Okay, so there's a uh, comment on the chat. Uh, GCM AES encrypt goes through KMalloc and scatterwalk copy chunk calls. Uh, so yes, the, the part about uh, the complexity of the current implementation certainly was uh, interesting and um, I guess there's an opportunity there to uh, clean that up and improve that. Okay, so uh, with that, let's uh, proceed to our uh, third talk. So we are going to talk about KTLS offload and the benefit in uploading crypto tests to the NIST. This presentation is based on a mechanism presented at NetDev 1.2 with TX offload and NetDev 2.2 with RX offload by, by Boris Tisman. The slides I'm going to show today was written by Tarik Tukan and myself. We are working at NVIDIA in the driver and control team and we'll show the advantage in uploading crypto assignments to NVIDIA Mellanox Magnetic 6 dx network interconnect. We will overview the responsibilities of each component, pack driver and hardware, and main upload data flows, and see some performance numbers for both small and large scale. So let's start with the motivation to use KTLS offload and introduction to common TLS. Uh, the motivation for this work mainly came from two perceptions. The first one is that all internet services are becoming more secure. Most of the websites today uses HTTPS connections that mainly rely on TLS protocol and Second perception uh, is that offloading tasks from the host and especially from the CPU, is important in order to keep up the increasing pace in the in internet consumption. 100G link, link speed, need to use these offloads in order to release as much CPU power to data process. 
the solution is based on a pretty much unchanged Linux networking stack with the addition of TLS non-crypto flow. So we get all the goods of a robust and resilient networking stack. Uh, TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. Uh, this protocol has several versions, and in this presentation, we will use uh, TLS version 1.2. TLS is a Layer 4 protocol based on top of TCP protocol that was first implemented for user space applications and was offloaded to kernel by KTLS module, and now to the NIC to encrypt decrypt packets on the fly. We will walk through KTLS device data flows for both the transmit and receive sites and present performance results in a patch synthetic environment and Nginx, Nginx real life server application. KTLS offload time. First implementation, which offloads crypto processing from application layer to the kernel, was introduced in kernel version 4.13 as a software offload. NVIDIA Mellanox Connect X6DX KTLS TX offload support was introduced by MLX 5E driver in kernel ver version 5.6. And the RX ability was added in kernel version 5.9. In between, we had an FPGA programmable framework implemented also by MLX 5E driver with supported offload in kernel for it. As this presentation is a part of TLS workshop, I believe that most of you are well known with the TLS protocol pros and cons. Ideally, we would process packet independent. It works like that in most common security protocols, for example, IPsec and DTLS. Unlike those protocols, TLS process records, and those records can be spread on a multiple TCP packet. At the right chart, we can see an example for three TLS records split to four TCP max segment size packets. We can see that all records share their data with another record, the same TCP packet. Uh, for example, a packet number two, TCP packet number two is shared between TLS record number one and TLS record number two. We used AES counter mode which generates ciphertext by XOR operation between the keystream and the data for encryption. Keystream can be generated using an initialization vector and key, and key, which can be found in the TLS crypto context. Driver is responsible for initializing hardware with the proper context provided by KTLS stack on creation. In addition, hardware must track the TLS context in order to successfully encrypt the crypt packet. Some flows can cause hardware to lose its state. In this case, hardware will indicate it to the driver that will coordinate with the TLS module to restore it. This scheme shows the rules of each layer. User space data is kept in memory. TLS protocol is responsible for data fragmentation, encrypt, decrypt, and authenticate, as well as adding headers and trailers, and to divide into records. Then it will hand it to the uh, TCP that splits the record into max segment size. We will start with the transmit flow. I will go through the condition checked in case of a good fast path. First, the driver will check each packet, whether it belongs to an offloaded socket. Let's say it's true. Now it will check the packet TCP sequence number and compare it to the expected TCP sequence number. If it's also true, it will prepare a proper TX descriptor and forward the packet for authentication and encryption on the fly by the NIC and to the wire. Let's say once again that the packet is an offload packet, but the driver discovered that TCP sequence number is not the expected TCP. Now driver will trigger this inflow 
first the driver will understand to which record this packet belongs to, followed by updating hardware with the suitable crypto content using fast pass communication with fencing to guarantee that we supply hardware with the proper TIC Notice that KTLS module is not invo involved in this procedure. Now the packet can be passed for encryption once again by the user. We will move to the receive side path. When hardware is in offload state, all packets belong to a connection passing through the crypto engine are decrypted and authenticated. Hardware will indicate it to the driver using ARG with crypto, and the driver will mark it to inform software TLS using SKD decrypted field. Now for the receive side traffic, TLS module will check each record independently. It will check if all packets inside the TLS record are decrypted. In this case, it's true. So we can copy the decrypted data to memory. In case of out of orders or drops, we will defer the data pass to two scenarios. First one is partially decrypted TLS packet. Not all packet inside the record is decrypted, but some of them actually does. In the stream below, we can see that packet number three is ciphertext, while packet two and four are plain text. Means that TLS record number two is mixed with both, with both cipher and plain text. Packet three contains payload and TCP headers without any TLS record header. So in this case, software will prove the job, decrypt packet number three. After that, we can copy all data. We should note that it will not impact the following packet. Hardware can decrypt packets four, five, and seven. Four, five, six, and seven. The other case will require hardware resynchronization. Hardware must track crypto context for each connection and out of order or drops can cause hardware to get out of sync. And when it does, hardware will stop decrypting packets for this process. In this case, it will send the resync request using its RX descriptors to the driver that notifies TLS stack using the new async resync API. Following it, the driver query the device for a guest TCP sequence number and provide it to the stack. KTLS stack will check if it, if it matches any of its tracked incoming packets and call the driver which resync hardware. Meanwhile, software will finish the job and decrypt all encrypted packets. Uh, after a successful resync, the device will return to a flood state and decrypt the received packet. Uh, the chart uh, broken line symbolizes that recent flow is approved by software and hardware can decrypt. So to show the performance impact of KTLS hardware offload with Nginx server, we use two AMD EPIC systems connected through switch with connecting 6BX NIC to the WRK client. WRK opens different amount of connection connections range between 1,024 and 32K connections with 64 threads and continuously requesting one megabyte file from the server. Nginx responds with either plain text HTTP response, HTTP with software KTLS, which uses OpenSSL TLS uh, version 1.2 implementation, and HTTPS with KTLS hardware TX offload. In this case, we modified Nginx to use send file chain. Also for TLS traffic, since the default is only for HTTP. All implementations reach line rates from 1,024 1, and up to 30K connections. And the graph shows around 85 gigabit per second at the WR, as the WRK reporting it in application layer, two, which is not uh, taken into consideration layer three and four headers. 
basically it's a pure HTTP object data, means the bandwidth in which we can transfer HTTP objects. This slide shows the CPU improvement, followed by offloading crypto crunching device. We calculated active costs by summing the amount of CPU used by the server in order to transmit 100 gigabits at a time. We calculated improvement with the delta between HTTPS using software and hardware offload divided by the amount used by software. And for example, in this server we used 64 calls. And let's assume that all cores are working in 50% utilization. 64 cores multiplied in 0 0.5 equals to 32 active cores. We saw a pretty much significant improvement of up to 50% reduction in CPU use. If we look at the table at 32K connection, HTTP response activates a bit more than 12 cores in order to maintain line rate. Software KTLS uses 19 active cores, which is around seven more than HTTP. When KTLS hardware TX offload uses 14 active cores, only two more than HTTP. And we should notice that for 1024 to 8K cases, so we can see that HTTP using KTLS TX offload is using less active cores than HTTP. This is caused by a higher packet rate when transmit, transmitting plain text that leads to a higher CPU utilization. I will clarify uh, on the wire, we have less headers for the same MTU and HTTP connection can process more data. This slide shows throughput speed up when using full unidirectional off. Uh, we use two Intel servers connected back to back with connected 6x NIC. We patched Hyper to support TLS handshake using OpenSSL libraries and compare between software KTLS <laughs> and the receive method, KTLS device offload and TCP traffic using stack send and receive method. Full using directional offloads mean we use TX offload in server side and RX offload on the client. We measure up to 2.5x speed up, like we can see in uh, the single stream bar. Uh, we can see 18 gigabit good put comparing to the 7 gigabit achieved by software. KTLS offload reached line rates with less connection, uh, with less connections, as we can see in the eight stream case. And once again, the graph reports application layer throughput or good put reported by Hyper, something like 94.5 gigabit. In the following two slides, we want to show how KTLS device offload can save a lot of CPU power for both sender and receiver. We took cases that achieve 100G line rate and compare the amount of active cores for each case. Again, active cores is the amount of CPU used in order to get 100G. So if we look at the sender graph, we can see that in order to, act, to achieve line rate, with 64, 128, and 512 connections, we use the same amount of active calls for KTLS device and for plain text TCP traffic. Means we recover all of the CPU overhead caused when using TLS protocol. Uh, when I say we recover all, I should use quotation marks and the small difference in CPU utilization when using TCP traffic caused by packet rate differences. TCP packet rate was higher in comparison to the two KTLS implementation presented, like in the case we saw earlier.
Now for the received side, so if we look at the left column, we can see that in order to get 100 G line rate over TCP traffic with 64 connections on the received side, we use eight active cores from the uh, 24 available in the system. A bit more than 10 from KTLS device offload and almost 18 with software KTLS implementation. If we look at the right column in the graph, we can see that using software KTLS over 512 connections uses 19 cores, which is nine more active cores than TCP. TLS offload uses 13 cores, three more, three more than TCP for this calculation. And let's use TCP as a lower bound. We can look at the delta between software and TCP as the TLS overhead. So we recover 66% 66, 66 of the CPU overhead, mainly crypto overhead caused by software implementation. Uh, in the receive side, we do not see a better CPU utilization for KTLS device like we saw in the TX side. In this case, the overhead is too high to recover, but we saw a bit higher packet rate also here. So we, uh, we walk through the benefits of using a TLS device API. So adding crypto state to the NIC and the ability to encrypt the crypt packets on the fly leaves us with single PCI round trip, which helped to save PCI e a bandwidth and added no additional latency in comparison to uh, data designated for encryption is not written to RAM. The TLS tags add non-crypto uh, flow to deal with KTLS device offload. Other than that, it remains unchanged. Uh, so we profit the resilience TCP stack with memory management, congestion control, and other important components that comes with it. And the last point is that the driver calls the TLS stacks whenever hardware needs to be resynced. So uh, to summarize it, we saw a significant performance throughput speed up gain by offloading crypto processing uh, to the network device. KTLS device offload recovers a massive amount of CPU overhead caused by TLS protocol. It can help prevent hackers from getting the data before it, uh, it is encrypted since no encrypted data is written to RAM. And we end ends up with an easy to maintain, high performing TLS implementation relying on the great Linux networking stack. That's it. Thanks for listening. Okay, uh, thank you. So we do have um, a few questions on the chat that I'd like to get to. However, we're also at the official end of the session. So unless there's um, object objections, I propose that we uh, extend this a few minutes so we can cover uh, some of these questions. So the first question, and then I think there were several in this vein, um, reorder TCP packets. So what exactly happens when they get reordered? What is the impact? What happens if uh, we have a flow that's consistently getting reordered packets? I'm not sure I, I understand the, the whole question. And uh, also we have Boris here to help me as the architect of this uh, feature. So. In case of reordering, uh, um, we can trigger software offload to take control and um, like finish the job for the offload, for the hardware offload. Uh, but in a pretty much uh, 
reordering consistent in environment, KTLS will will uh, trigger resync again and again, so it will be harmful. Okay, uh, which real world website has HTTP transfers with one megabyte sizes? So this is a good question. We, we took this um, file sizes as we tried several uh, file sizes. So we started with the 64K uh, files uh, up to checking, uh, uh, try to check like streaming scenarios in, in which um, uh, companies that can support videos and streaming uh, services to, uh, to to the world, so th they use big files. But uh, I don't know for a real website that using one megabyte files, but pretty much large files. I know about several customers of our company, uh, so it can be large files, but specifically one megabyte i can find an example for it uh, okay so I, th I think the point there is for something like video where we're serving uh massive amounts of data it's that's a clear use case for something like ktls where we're optimizing for the amount of data as opposed to uh, small packets okay uh next question mm -hmm. ktls works in process context so TLS record and TCP segments are formed in different workflows. Wouldn't it simplify to manage TLS records on TX path if KTLS formed a TLS record on SK write transmit? So I think the, the question there is if we maybe deferred the, the TLS record into the kernel uh, then we can construct TLS records of optimal sizes. That seems to be the question. And then would that improve the performance for TLS over TCP? Uh, I'm not sure I, I understand the question, but if, if I do, sounds like, sounds like a pretty much something to check. Excuse me, uh, can, can I ask uh, by voice? Hello? Yes, yes you can ask by voice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the question is that um, we, we ca um, in um, SK, white like Smith, uh, the function calling in uh, TCP IP stack, we know exactly uh, the state of TCP, uh, exactly how much data uh, TCP uh, can send to the peer. In this place, we can form a TLS record of optimal size. So we can uh, split the TLS record uh, uh, very accurately according to TCP segments. That's the problem which you uh, initially mentioned at the beginning of the presentation when TLS record doesn't match uh, TCP segments exactly. So uh, I'm wondering uh, whether uh, different design when uh, KTLS works inside the software queue context. Uh, wouldn't such design simplify uh, offloading on the network uh, interface by the NIC? Does it make sense? Yeah, also to me. So it might be interesting to see the uh, prototype code of that. Uh, we I have agree. a prototype. Our code works exactly this way. It's not in upstream, but uh, TMPS works exactly this uh, way. So I would suggest to post it upstream. I think there's um, there needs to be discussion. One of the one of the concerns I would have is that we're inserting uh, data into the TCP stream as opposed to. To modifying that, I'm sure that would have some some ramifications. Uh, obviously, with TLS, we're already being or KTLS, we're already being invasive on the transmit side. So, um, would that raise questions of how do we synchronize? If, for instance, we we wanted to move the TLS back into the host and, and things like that. So, let's go to 
Okay, next question. If the channel is lossy, then KTLS offload might go for resync often. I think that's a similar question to the reordering. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I think the, so that's about it. Uh, so uh, I think all, uh, thank you for everyone. I think these are three really good talks. Uh, super excited to see TLS performance getting such visibility, um, TLS in general. Okay, with that, uh, left adjourned, and I'll see you in the next uh, set of workshops. Thank you very much. Thank you.